Adam. I'm a junior and a second year mentee, and this piece is called The 100th Day of School. Every year when I was in elementary school, the second and third graders went on an ice skating trip to celebrate the 100th day of school. Unlike the kids in the grade below us, we were totally experienced enough to not collide with other skaters or, God forbid, lick the ice. <laughs> The teachers and parent chaperones, including my mom, herded us through the brown slush-coated streets and into the subway on our journey from Tribeca to Woolman Rink. By the time we arrived and finished tying the endless laces of our rental ice skates, my friends and I were finally ready to impersonate graceful figure skaters. We slid across the ice, barely keeping balance for about an hour. An announcement then told us to take a break from skating, so we filtered through a tiny exit and waited along the outer edge of the rink. My classmates peered over the side, hoping to get a glimpse of a Zamboni. But soon, we realized that the break wasn't for the purpose of cleaning. An employee placed a mat down on the ice, and another set up a podium on top of it. The rink was left in that lifeless setup until a towering figure in a long black trench coat arrived. A mixture of gasps and hesitant applause ensued in the audience. His face, tinted purple from the cold, and his tuft of thin, pale hair seemed a bit familiar. Mom, who is that guy? I asked. Donald Trump, my mom sighed. <laughs> a rich guy who bought almost the entire city, including this rink. So is that why he's hogging the ice? <laughs> yep, that's not fair, I wailed. Losing part of our long-awaited field trip to an old guy making a speech about how rich he was made me furious. <laughs> I leaned against the edge of the rink, waiting for the incoherent speech to end, but it never did. <laughs> I paid for this rink, he said. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> because I care about making the city better for the children. Yeah, right. <laughs> All he was doing <laughs> was hogging the ice and annoying the children with his mumbling. We just wanted to skate. Thirty minutes in, my classmates were restless. We didn't wait precisely 100 days for our trip to be stolen. It started as a whisper among two or three people in the crowd. Get off the ice. Get off the ice. <laughs> Inaudibly, so the teachers wouldn't hear. In a remarkable chain reaction, more and more people joined in on the chair, <laughs> which increased in volume. In a matter of seconds, 200 second and third graders were shouting, Get off the ice. Get off no teachers dared to stop us, and many stood in solidarity with our actions. He persisted through his arrogant speech without acknowledging us, as if it were, was more important than our long-awaited field trip. But Trump's words escaping the tiny microphone, which matched his tiny hands, <laughs> were incapable of silencing our battle cry. He nervously brought his speech to an end, and we celebrated our victory by reclaiming the ice. The real question is, will we be able to reclaim our country from a fascist leader the way that a bunch of elementary schoolers reclaimed their field trip? We don't know yet, but it's no question that collective action can make a huge difference. Even if you're not old enough to vote, even if you're not old enough to ice skate without holding someone else's hand, you can still speak up. If we all make our voices heard, maybe Trump will get off the ice. <laughs>